material. Welcome to jasonchats.com. The weird thing about having a beard, apart from looking well, like I live on the street, is the grey bits. sometimes think there's food there. I don't know, sometimes I find food in the beer, but not generally. But if I eat out, I don't think I'm necessarily a messy eater, but it gets stuck. I mean, I just get very self-conscious about it. And the, you might not have known, I mean, if any, anyone here that's watching this has watched previous videos of mine going back to 2006, I didn't have that. I didn't have grey there. I'm going a little bit thin on top, but not... I don't know if you can see. It's a little bit thin there. Um, but this was ginger. That was ginger. So the bits that have gone grey were originally ginger. So, and I've got ginger pubes. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you that. Um, wait a minute, let's just check. Yeah, they're kind of ginger. Um, not like bright ginger like bright red, but definitely more gingerish, like brown. Brown kind of mingles into ginger, doesn't it, kind of. But yeah, so the ginger turned gray. So does that happen with ginger people? People have got ginger hair, like the whole lot. Do they go gray quicker? I don't know. But ginger hair does run in my family. Uh, my uncle, my, what's her name? Yeah, my grandmother's, my nan's brother was Ginger. And my cousin, my cousin's daughter is Ginger. So that as far as I'm aware, the, the only two Gingers in the family. Actually, one of my s distant cousins, I think she kind of was quite gingery. But, so it's, so if I had a kid, which I'm probably a bit too old kid to be giving birth, but I could have a ginger child. And, that'd be quite cool. I'm not gingerist. Some people are prejudiced against ginger people, which seems the most ridiculous thing. I mean, so many other reasons to hate on people other than the colour of their hair. But it's, I like, I've, ever since I was at school, I was attracted to ginger girls, girls with red hair. And, but natural, natural ginger girls, natural. Yeah, I don't know why. I used to date a girl at school on and off for a few years. Kind of dated, I don't know. Messed around with, was friends with her, kind of kind of thing. Um, played around with each other. But I, I liked her. And sometimes, I could, by the way, this is my blog. I'm Jason, hi. This, so I, I try, this is how boring I am. I actually sometimes, usually when I'm in bed, I make a list of things. Um, it might be, I try and keep a list of how many jobs I've had, which is a lot. How many like full-time jobs, how many part-time job jobs I've had, a lot. How many times I've been unemployed, a lot different times, how many uh, times I've had depression and gone to the doctors with depression and been given antidepressants, a lot. 
how many nurses I've dated? Quite a few. How many ginger girls or ginger women I've dated? Quite a few. It's weird, isn't it? I just, I like to, something about making lists. Sometimes I do it on paper, you know, but generally it's in my head and I just make a list of all the different things. Like, I think it categorises it. Maybe it's, I'm trying to get my memory in some kind of order. Because I don't, my memory's not connected with emotion. If that makes any sense. I don't, I don't have hap, um, like really emotional ties to any wedding I've been to, any uh, any date I've ever been on, uh, any family gathering. I have like faint memories of them, and it's very kind of factual. Well, this happened. September 1989 was my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. But I don't have like an emotional connection um, apart from maybe my, my nan's funeral. Um, and so there's a couple of bits, but generally it's just more of a factual thing. So I may be not having the emotional connection. It makes it means my memory isn't as good as it could be. Perhaps I don't know. So that's what I was just thinking just then. Ugh. It's one thirty in the morning, and it's actually Friday morning. But this is my Thursday vlog, bipolar. Jason chats bipolar vlog. So I'll put it down as that day. As far as I'm concerned, the day ends when I go to bed. And the day starts, the next day starts when I get out of bed. I think, isn't that how we all kind of think? Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Last night, I lose track. Earlier today, I mean, today I woke up again and I couldn't be bothered. Just had a real lack of interest. Um, and I just got to say, I ain't got to say anything, but my website, the jasonnewland.com, the, my main website, it's really coming along nicely really pleased with the organization that I've done the categorization and there's still a lot more to do but I'm really happy with how it's looking it's, uh, excuse me but it's a very big task and it takes motivation to get into it today I didn't feel it I really didn't and I had a lot of sleep last night well, a fair good night amount of sleep. Half two in the morning till about half eleven. And I went back to bed again about two to about five. Um, during that time when I was awake though, I did make a, a let me bore you to sleep session. And between me and you, I was quite pleased with it. It was... Yeah, it was. It could have been a a standard sleep session, you know, an actual um, hypnoticy, more hypnoticy kind of thing. But I was pleased. It's uh, yeah. I just it just felt quite right. It felt quite. Um, I felt connected with it, and you know, what? I think there's a potential with more practice, more time, more studying, that I could be quite good at hypnosis. I could be like really, 
pretty good, I think. Because you know, I have these self-doubts, which is the standard thing, I guess. Um, I have these self-doubts about myself and about my abilities and about if I was any good at doing this, why am I not doing it with people? Why am, why am I not earning a living face-to-face -face with people? Because I do get asked to do it. It's not like I'm not asked. I get people online wanting me to do Skype sessions with them. I've got people with, that I meet, friends of friends that want me to do hypnosis with them. I've got people from the past contacting me, asking me to do stuff, you know, hypnosis with them. And they always say no. And it's not because I'm being rude or anything like that. It's don't really feel confident in a way even though I know that technically it's much easier in person than it is doing a session uh, for everyone to listen to because or watch because it has to be really vague with a person in front of me I can find out beforehand what's what they need and what will maybe work and I can see instantly in front of me the reactions and the responses and you know where I'm going and you know so it's also can't see inside their head to understand what they're thinking but I do know the signs of hypnosis and I can tell kind of where they are in that I don't have that luxury with videos or with mp3s but the thing that kind of puts me off one of the things that puts me off a few things one is the the bipolar issue as far as I don't know how I'm gonna feel tomorrow or the day after or next Wednesday next Friday in order for me to book clients up so I could I'm fairly sure that if I did it and it was successful and I felt comfortable and I was happy I would have a endless supply of clients coming to see me wherever I was I'm sure that would happen but then it's me being in the right state of mind to be able to deal with them and be able to give my best which again could happen could be could be actually the best thing in the world for me to do. So that's one issue that kind of stops me is just, I guess, just faith or in myself or self-belief or whatever. The other thing is, I like, I prefer the idea of helping lots of people all at the same time. If I just see one person one on one, the most amount of people I could ever help in one week, well, technically, would be if I saw five people a day, 25 people a week, if I had a weekend off, or if I had two days off. I realised that actually there's the roll on effect, so I might help one person, but that could improve the life of another six people so if I'm if there's a, say a parent comes to me and they've got an issue with anger for an example I help him or her with that issue over a few sessions maybe that then changes the life of the person's husband or wife, the uh, children maybe, their parents, you know, friends, family, and then the children's life is changed, then they go to school and it could change the life of their friends. And it, you know, cause there's a roll on effect which could transform. Um, I like the idea of going right the way through, you know, going further and further to the point where um, that child 
me, you know, the child of the parent that's no longer angry or takes the anger out on the child anymore, means that the child is no longer angry and they go on to fulfill their potential and maybe find a cure for cancer or Alzheimer's or dementia or, or you know, Parkinson's or something like major, they do a major thing. Um, I like those kind of thoughts. It, it makes me feel good. Just the chain effect, the, the you know, that can happen. That this is happening all the time. We all have an effect on other people, don't we? Um, so I, I like that, but I like the idea more. Well, I like the idea, not more, but of being able to reach a wider scope of people. So in the last week, maybe if it's been five, between five and seven thousand plays and downloads of my audios. compared to seeing 25 people and that number is always growing and growing and growing and growing so in a year's time I might be you know seeing it might be reaching 50,000 a week 100,000 a week who knows you know as time goes by I'm never going to be able to reach that many people one-on-one -on -one. and the other thing that kind of perhaps would stop me or that's sort of getting in the way is my style if you for want of a better word my style my way of doing things is a bit rambly it's not as obvious as maybe it could be I like to just take my time you know in some ways I prefer if I had a client they sat there for two hours and I just took my time and just chatted to them for two hours I suppose another more ideal situation would have maybe 200 people 100 people in an audience and I just sat and talked to them for an hour you know, just to reach a, a large amount of people, but the energy, I think, really has an effect. I noticed that with the Buddhism uh, meditation at the Buddhist center. I've been to a, um, a few Buddhist centers over the years. Meditating on your own can be great. Meditating with a group of people, perhaps people that you friends with, um, can be really amazing you know it's I don't someone I'm someone that doesn't really like being around people generally especially people I don't know but being around being in a room I'd rather be in a room with 40 people that I don't know sitting with my eyes closed not having to talk to them rather than be sitting, standing in a room with 40 people with the expectation of some kind of communication. So yeah, but the energy that seems to come from the collective is, I'm not sure how scientific it is when we are just energy and we do connect with each other and we affect each other. But it seems to work. It seems to really have a, an actual effect, a positive, uh, therapeutic effect. So yeah, that's that's me today. I just I did my audio recording, uh, uploaded it to SoundCloud, uploaded it to Podomatic, uploaded it to Podbean channel. The, main podcast is the Podbean one for the Let Me Bore You To Sleep uh, so it's available on iTunes and various other podcasts and I've converted it into a video so it's on YouTube as well on uh, Jason Newland's Sleep Hypnosis and that's that's cool going good as well because it's uh, I've got 
No, it's not like a huge amount, but I've got 19 subscribers on there. And I'm pleased with how it's going. It's, it's slow, but it's steady. Um, I'm getting subscribers on my website as well, which is I'm quite pleased about. Again, it's slow, but it's steady. Every day I'm getting some, maybe one even, but sometimes two, sometimes three subscribers. And those that do subscribe, they receive notification, a notification email every time I um, upload or release a new session on my website so I just any hypnosis session audio mp3 I put onto my section which is latest on the website uh, I don't I don't put the Jason chats vlogs on there because it'd be too much of a bombardment you know so I imagine these every night as well I don't I'm sure if people want to watch these they'll just come to the YouTube channel or they'll go to the uh, Vimeo channel or go to the jasonchats.com blog um, website but yeah I'm quite pleased with the website how it's going I'm really um, let's have a look at it now I should try and show you it I don't know if this is going to work give me two seconds That's the, if you can see, that's me making it, that's not the actual website itself, but it's the, the portal that I'm building on. So this, um, I'm getting through to the podcasts and trying to organise them, so each podcast, I think I've got 13 now. So that's the first podcast, Jason Newland's Free Hypnosis Service. And underneath I've got 13 different podcast hosts. You can click on each one to go to the page. So some people may use um, Spreaker or Blueberry or Stitcher or Streaker or Podbean. That might be their main place that they listen to podcasts. So I just give everyone the option to go to wherever they naturally go, rather than have to go to iTunes, which might not be their favourite place. If it is, you can go there as well. Um, it's taken ages, it's taken hours just to do that one little page there. But I'm fairly pleased with how it's going. So yeah, I'm feeling quite good about it. It's Thursday now, well it's Friday tomorrow, or today, but when I get up, I reckon by the weekend I should have that page done. Hopefully by the end of tomorrow I'll have that page done, but it might take the weekend. And then I can start doing some other stuff. But something different about this time. I've built websites since 2000. And our first hypnosis website was helpwithpain.com or helpwithpain.co.uk, one of them. And I had that in 2004, I think. I had another website called freepainrelief.co.uk, which I used in 2006 for my free hypnosis service that I used to have in my local area. And I've had lots of different, I had one called Tidy Search. I've had lots of different websites. And I've also done a jasonnewland.com over and over again, deleted it, built it, updated it, rebuilt it, kind of refurbished it. But for some reason this time it seems like it's, uh, I don't want to use the word permanent because it permanent doesn't really exist, does it? But it's like whatever I do now, I'm building upon. I'm not going to be deleting anything. It's all going to be building upon it. something and it feels quite nice so yeah so today um, as I said earlier I had no interest in doing anything 
I did the let me bore you to sleep session and then I ended up going to sleep again woke up was hungry so I had time to eat I then went back to bed so I still I went took Andre for a walk came back and I went back to bed again till about half ten so from seven half seven to about half ten I went to bed or nine to half ten something I don't know something like that and when I woke up at half ten I felt alive I felt motivated, enthused to work on a website. So, hey, just got to go with what is, that's how it is at the moment, I don't know why, but I know that I'm enjoying doing it at the moment, but earlier I had no interest, absolutely zero interest in it. Oh, by the way, I'm not showing you Andre because he's asleep and if I wake him up to bring him to show, you know, play with him on the screen, he'll just cause havoc because he keeps jumping up at the radiator and trying to get through the front door because he wants to go out all the time. And if he does that at night, especially 2.30 2 in the morning, I have to put him into his cage and then, depending on his mood, if he's really he gets angry when he's in the cage sometimes he'll just keep rattling and making loads of noise which defeats the object of putting him in there um, so he's asleep and I'm quite pleased with that he's yeah but he loves going out he had a really good good walk I didn't want to go out but I managed to you know I had a bath and I'm all just took him out because he needed to go out I needed to get some milk um, another thing I got paid today or yesterday and got my money and it's just bills I got a £41 bill for my phone to pay which goes out on the 18th and about hundred and thirty five pound or hundred and forty pound for my electric and gas which means all the money's gone it's just gone everything so I can't you know I can't pay the bills because then it leaves me no money to buy food no money for any other direct debits so it's, it's a bit of a weird one I just I'm pleased with having all the different tools and the different podcasts that I'm paying for, but it's, I know I keep going on about it, but it's really starting to hit home a little bit. I might have to make cuts. I could just go back to basic one podcast and get rid of all the other stuff. One website, one podcast. I feel really sad though, I would. Oh man, after all the work I've done. Um, yeah, I would feel sad if, if I did that. But I might have to. I'm gonna try and see how I get on. I get paid next week, and then I have to go two weeks without any money. So I'm not gonna spend any money other than a little bit on food tomorrow maybe. And then next week when I get paid, I'm gonna have to pay the electric and gas and just see how much money I've got to get me through. Yay! Uh. I feel tired but in a good way, in a kind of relaxed way. Uh, not stressed at all right now which is nice. I've not watched, yeah, I'm not watching any telly really as such. I'm just working on my website and just 
probably have a little bit of music in the background and get to bed probably soon. I might even go to bed in a minute when I've done this. But generally, right now I'm feeling all right, a little bit tired, but not tired, not like really badly tired, just I feel as if I've accomplished something and all I've done really is just work a bit on the website. But I'm pleased with what I have done. It's it's kind of moving me forward. I don't know where to, but it's moving me forward. And it's one step towards the website being at a position where I don't need to give it much attention other than to upload new material. And then I could start thinking about maybe maybe uh, how to raise some money or how to sponsor or finance the free service that I offer. Yeah. So I'm gonna go now. So isn't it really weird? I, I can talk for 31 minutes like I had just now. 32 minutes probably before I finish. Yeah, I can watch a video on YouTube and it lasts for seven minutes. And it seems to last for ages. So I don't know, is that what it's like when you watch these videos? They just seem to go on forever and ever and ever. If that's the case, then sorry about that. But then you wouldn't be you wouldn't be watching this unless you probably unless you, you know, watch my stuff before. You might be, it might be the first time, you might be thinking, well, when are you gonna talk about bipolar? That's the thing, this is. I'm talking about my life. My bipolar life. You know, that's the thing that gets missed, I think, sometimes. Um, having bipolar isn't all about you know, extreme things happening. It's about being alive, you know. We, I could focus on the times when I'm in bed not knowing what the hell to do and how am I gonna, um, you know, to have no motivation and to have that emotional pain or to have that numbness and not know, you know, not being able to Or just to have that stuckness, not being able to do anything and get out of that, that feeling. But I don't think it's fair. It's not, it's not a, it's not the full picture, is it? What about when things, I can talk about when things are going brilliant and I'm feeling great and I'm, on top of the world and I want to fly through the moon, you know, I, you know, I could talk about that stuff when I think that, well, delusional maybe, when I feel that I'm going to tour the world and do amazing things, but the medication kind of stops that thinking, to be fair, a bit. What about all the stuff in between? The thoughts that I'm thinking, the, um, the things that I'm, the dreams that I've maybe I've had. I had some very weird dreams last night, or during the day, I can't remember which. It involved violence, so I'm not pleased about it. There's me trying to stop a fight There's more to someone than, people are not just the illness that they have. I hope I'm making sense, I'm possibly not. I don't mind. I just don't wanna, you know, I have, I have a mood disorder, I have, uh, 
personality disordery thing. You know, emotionally unstable personality dis disorder with impulsive traits or whatever, impulsivity, which explains some of the things I do, but I don't do much of that stuff anymore compared to what I used to. Unstable, well, maybe, but for me, the solution has been to keep away from people. That's not the best solution for those that want to live a, a life that involves other people. I've kind of chosen not to have that kind of life. And that's based on a lifetime of trying to fit in and trying to um, deal with people and realizing that my most relaxed state is when I'm on my own, when I feel safe that is, when you know, when I've got Andre here with me. That's probably when I'm happiest, is when I've got him in my arms and he's asleep or he's just cuddling me. I'm happy in that moment. And things that make me happy, I'm happy when I wake up and I see that I've had a, a big spike in the stats. Uh, a lot of people, uh, for some reason, have downloaded my audios that's nice you're not going to go on soundcloud and instead of the an average day of maybe four or five hundred i might have eight hundred in the last 24 hours or podomatic i might have a couple of hundred downloads that day instead of maybe you know it's just it's just it's gone up that's nice to see that. It's nice to have that spike of interest and it triggers an inner feeling of pleasure for me, like contentment, uh, accomplishment, self-appreciation probably. It's the little things that excite me. You know, sometimes it's when I was younger, I'd write a joke and I just thought it was hilarious. Doesn't mean it was hilarious, but I thought it was hilarious. And I'd be in such a good mood. Really just like, wow, such a good mood. Or I'd be in the supermarket buying stuff for the weekend you know enough food to get me through till Monday and this would be on a Friday and I'd be so looking forward to getting home even if it was in a horrible room that I lived in just the idea of being able to close that door and not see another person not speak to another person for two whole days it was bliss it just felt so nice And it's not because I dislike people, I, I really, but I don't like everybody, obviously. I mean, no one, who likes everybody? But it's not that, it's not like a, full of hatred and anger towards humans, because I'm not, I don't feel that. I just, well, sometimes, but generally not. It's usually individuals, I'm not really, I try not to generalize. I think if you're gonna be angry towards somebody, be angry towards that person. You know, be aware of who you're angry at. Rather than taking it out on the wrong people. I just, I don't think it's even so much that I like or enjoy my own company. I just like and enjoy not being in other people's company. It's nice. Not all the time. I'm saying that's how I feel all the time because it's not. You know, I do have friends and I do 
like to see people for short periods of time sometimes but you know it's, it's nice I'm not a, a social creature I'm not a sociable person and I'm not going to beat myself up about it anymore because it means I don't have to put on a facade I don't have to be fake and pretend to be interested in other people and again it's not that I don't care it's just I'm not interested and you can care for someone but not be interested in be interested in their life I do believe that it might sound like a weird thing but you know I will help out somebody you know for example if there's uh, someone knocked on my door they didn't have any food and they were hungry and they you know uh, they say they lived across the road and I might not have I knew might not have known them but they I know them from walking the dog or something and they say oh, I've got no absolutely no food at all it's snowing we can't get out to the shops and they're maybe the elderly in the 90s or 80s and stuff and I'll, I'll help them out and I'll give them food tea bags not not tea bags to eat I mean I'll give them food plus you know something to drink tea bags and stuff and so I'll, I'll care about their well-being but I won't be interested in their life. And I can't fake interest. What's the point in faking it? Plus, nobody's interested in my life. You know, as far as friends go, nobody is interested in the hypnosis stuff I do, the online stuff I do. It's the most important thing in my life, other than Andre. Um, And this hypnosis stuff I do is going to be around long after Andre's gone, long after I'm gone, hopefully, it will still be around. You know, that's why I need people to start storing and storaging stuff and storaging some of this stuff and downloading it so you can make it available when I'm gone. But nobody is interested. No family, no friends, nobody. But genuinely, hardly, you know, I've had got one friend that was interested to a degree of like, she used to help promote the hypnosis side of things and get her friends to come and see me. And yeah, she was interested in helping me, but she's not interested in hypnosis. nobody's interested in this free hypnosis service not one person that I know that's quite sad isn't it it's something I devote my life to that's a bit of a shame I'd love to I think my ideal situation if I had a girlfriend I don't have a girlfriend but if I was able to meet a, a woman that was really I wanted to really to be into me because I've actually experienced that I think once and it was cool that's nice but um, someone that's really interested in what I'm doing and that can be part of this to be part of the website be part of what I'm doing maybe we could organize some kind of tour and she'd come with me and you know you know what I mean it's like if I do record and get to record in studio start making some professional CDs or mp3s she can come with me maybe she can if she's a musician or something she can make some music for the background sound for some sessions you know I'd love to have someone that was interested in what I do and to be part of this because this is this is my life I hope one day I do meet someone like that. It'd be so cool to share. It's not about just sharing my life, it's just sharing the 
this, this is my life. The online hypnosis crappy stuff that I do. I don't think it's all crap. I think some of it's quite good, but it's all down to personal opinion, isn't it? I'd love the chance to meet someone that was really interested. But then, on the other side, won't I have to show interest in her? So it'd be easier for me to be interested in her, naturally, if she's into this stuff. If she's a hypnotherapist or hypnotist or she's really into what I'm doing. Or maybe she's doing the same thing, you know. Then I would be interested and, you know, I think I've got quite a bit to information to pass on to somebody, especially when it comes to online stuff, because I've been doing it for so long. I'm no expert on anything, but I, I know a few things. And of course, she could be in a position to pass on her in knowledge and to me, stuff that I don't know. So it could be a nice little partnership, best friend, lover, wife, maybe if, if marriage is something that we both wanted. Life partner. Yeah, that's what I'd like. Someone to spend the rest of my life with. But at the same time, focusing on this. Focusing on the hypnosis stuff, the online stuff. I know that in some ways, I'm still also putting a bit of energy into the Jason Chats, bipolar vlogs. But it's quite easy for me just to talk about myself my favourite subject for well, this is a long much longer than I expected it to be so I'm not, sh not even sure how long it's going to take to upload probably about an hour you know I like the idea of maybe in a bipolar advocate or an advocate for mental health issues You know, it's one thing that people might get from this. And when I was first diagnosed, I went online, I went on YouTube, I started watching vlogs, bipolar vlogs. I started watching bi uh, videos about bipolar, like educational ones, you know. Then I started watching vlogs people would do like a bipolar diary and talking about their experiences and stuff. And some of the stories were so extreme that I kind of doubted myself. Like, well, I'm not doing that. Then how can I be bipolar if I'm not doing some of those really massively extreme things. Well, I've done a few things in the past, but you know, some nothing really compared to some of the things that I've heard or watched. Partly because I never had the money, perhaps, to do some of those things. But, I've never killed myself, um, that's an obvious thing I'm alive, but I've never actively gone to take my own life, I've never taken an overdose, never overdosed, never committed suicide, never tried to, never cut my wrists, anything like that, and again I was watching videos and I was thinking, well, I should be, shouldn't I have been doing that, not shouldn't I do it, but how can I be bipolar if I haven't experienced that? I have been suicidal, but not I've not actually gone through with it. I mean, I was, the first time I was suicidal, I was... What was I about? 13? I was going to jump in front of a train. But 
yeah. So, so what someone might get out of these videos is seeing, realizing by watching these that actually it's okay to be you and to still function. So I think that's with mental illness, there's, I think there's this idea that it's all of, it's like continuous non-function, continuous chaos the whole time. And I realize there are some people that do have that. They, they, some people do live in a chaotic lifestyle and like everything's chaos. It always seems chaotic the whole time. Um, but I would suggest that most people don't have that. They don't live in chaotic life the whole time. They might go in and out of that kind of lifestyle. But there are times when they function absolutely, absolutely fine. Or for a few days maybe. And maybe then another day they don't feel good. And they struggle to get out of bed. Or they feel so energetic they want to chuck in their job and go and move to Malibu with £10 in their pocket, you know, that kind of, you know, it could be anything. But there's a lot of normal life, a lot of normal living, normal as in standard, regular, the same as kind of anyone else. boring stuff I suppose just regular life you know cooking eating going to the toilet having a bath having a shower going to work so that's the thing most people with bipolar go to work most people with bipolar are not on the sick are not you know um, they're on medication and they're functioning most people with mental illness are working or maybe parents they may be carers themselves for someone else a lot of people with bipolar are not diagnosed so they may be self-medicating so there's so many cliches about people with mental illness and I've noticed that people in this country anyway they don't call it mental illness anymore they call it mental health so if someone's bipolar or someone's had a breakdown they say oh yeah he's got mental health uh -huh. mental health means you're well if someone has a schizophrenic um, breakdown uh, a psychosis they've not got mental health maybe add issues but that's, they're ill. Someone that's having a psychotic breakdown has not got issues, mental health issues. They have mental illness, it's an illness. Someone with cancer does not have health issues. You wouldn't say that about someone that's going through chemotherapy or someone that had Parkinson's, oh he's got health issues. No, it's, it's a serious condition and someone was having a heart attack you wouldn't say oh yeah they've got some health issues no they need medical attention immediately in the same way that someone's going through a psychosis need medical attention immediately if they're going through a psychotic episode that is um, so it's not mental health it's mental illness maybe mental health issues is an ongoing thing but it's not mental health it's about mental health it's these PC ways of talking I don't want to use the word illness why not call it what it is there's nothing wrong with being ill what, what's what's wrong with being ill what's wrong with having an illness a non-going illness is diabetes an illness it's ongoing. Most people have it forever. Once they get diagnosed, some people can reverse it. Some people only have it during pregnancy, you know. But 
the same with mental illness. Sometimes people have a psychosis and then they never have it again. Some people have depression, severe depression, and then never have another bout of depression for the rest of their lives. Some people don't. You know, so I could go on about that all night long. And I kind of feel like I might have done. I'm gonna go. So you take care of yourselves and I shall see you probably tomorrow. So check my website out, jasonchats.com, which is the blog, and jasonnewland.com, which is my main website. Or just put in Jason Chats Bipolar Vlog and you can search for YouTube channel, the YouTube channel there. I'm also on Vimeo as well. Just put my name in for Vimeo, Jason Newland and you'll find every single video that I've got available. There's quite a few. All right, see you later. Bye, 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 bye.